So, Robert, it's uh, sitting here together with you is obviously a very special occasion for me uh, when we sat together first time back in 2008. It was actually when our mutual journey started. I was just three weeks into my new job at Holtzbring Ventures, um, and our team already decided that we want to do this investment. This is when Robert came presenting. Um, he told me the story. They tested selling sandals uh, online uh, over the summer and now wanted to start an, an online shoe shop. And we were uh, just listening. I thought, well, this sounds like a pretty neat idea. Uh, you started in Torstrasse. And now fast forwarding from then to today is just an incredible story. You know, Zalando uh, publicly listed more than 10 billion in market cap. And as this is a pretty transparent company as of today, you can find a lot of information public. We want to dive a bit into the early days and see how it came to this. So uh, tell us at the start, how did you get onto the idea uh, together with David of selling shoes online? What was the, the genesis of this? Uh, yeah, so um, so be actually before we actually met, we had like a, this uh, this uh, social network company in Latin America, which we built up for five months and built down for five months. Yeah, so it was like a huge failure, and then we um, and then we got stranded like first of all in in, in Santiago de Chile and uh, later on in in Madrid. So that was actually like the um, like the the situation when we thought about okay, what what shall we do next? What kind of things we like? And if we once manage like a social network. You kind of always have the feeling that you don't really have any levers in hand actually to, to manage it bigger. So we really fell in love with e-commerce, and we looked into various kind of um, topics of e-commerce, and we kind of found shoes or flip-flops in the in the beginning very interesting. Uh, flip-flops was the ambition to sell shoes once uh, once a, a bit later, um, but we found it very interesting because uh, that we could see like that much search volume in the internet. So it was very clear of how we can actually scale uh, the customer proposition up to a good to a good extent. Great. Now, I mean, what me always fascinates is when you look at this company as of today, as said, 10 billion market cap, was there ever a master plan behind those companies? And I see this uh, when you look at Google, Apple, Facebook, uh, you wonder, well, did somebody have in mind when at the outset that something like this was possible to build this huge retailer, huge ecosystem? So what was your initial mission? Uh, or was this master plan of building this company at hand in the first innings? Um, so definitely no. So, um, so we, uh, you know, initially we thought, okay, we can. Um, there's an insight that we can. Uh, there's a customer insight that we can build a decent size of a company out of this. And, and uh, what would decent be? Like 50 million, huh? 50 so, million. Uh, so 50 and million. And you're at five billion today, right? Uh, yeah. So just for the records. <laughs> um, and um, but uh, and then when we actually started, so I think when we met, that was as well the the time when when we, when this kind of uh, big uh, financial crisis was. So we kind of had to downscale from 50 to 20 million. So it was like you know our 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 initial idea that we can actually build like a profitable business with 20 million. And then we always had like this plan. We uh, and we we kind of thought, okay, it can as well go bigger. But first of all, let's let's really do the first steps there. So when you hit the first step, I think uh, you took on board the first investment of Tengelmann, the, the substantial investment after Rocket and Holzbring invested, um, and then you stepped onto the gas pedal. So and actually, when Tengelmann came on board, we thought those are guys, guys are guys are crazy. They invested uh, 20 million at a uh, valuation of around 200 million. We thought that's insane, and probably it was the very best investment that uh, Christian Wind of Tengelmann ever did. So chapeau to him. But so. What did you do then uh, as the next milestone with uh, this uh, accelerated uh, phase? Yes. Yeah, so when we met with Tengma, I think it was about one and a half years after after um, after we we started. So and we um, we had like a big clarity in terms of the facts and the numbers that we can actually scale. Although like in 2009 we did like only six million revenues. Um, we you know we we approached Tengma and said, well next year we're going to do 150 million revenues, and these are all the levers that we have in hand. Yeah. So we kind of knew that we can scale up the search volume. We Knew that uh, by just scaling up the inventory, we can we can increase as well the the reach. We had the first kind of um, uh, the first insight in, into TV marketing, and we knew how this can uh, potentially kick off. Uh, so and then yeah, luckily uh, Tengeman believed into us, and then we just uh, scaled it from I think in the end from six million to 155 million in the, the next year. Six to 155 with retailing in one year. No, yeah, so incredible. The, the plan yeah. was 150, so we kind of uh, kind of over overachieved on our plan.
So this was the time when you made DHL a celebrity uh, by this postman delivering the parcels, right? Yeah, actually by coincidence, we never planned. <laughs> this was coincidence, yeah, again. It was yeah. coincidence. Fascinating. So tell us about the next step. So you had, uh, then basically it was clear, uh, you could build a pretty dominant market leader uh, here in Germany. And then the next milestone was probably, as I understand your logic, you had your base plan, but then you discussed with uh, Shinevik around a major financing round. Once this came in, what was the next milestone? Yeah, so um, I think it was like about one, one year later after, after Tengelmann, so in this 2010 like, like crazy scaling year. Um, so we had the first test of uh, launching a different country, which was, um, which was Netherlands, and we had um, already tried to expand a little bit beyond shoes. And it was like our mentality, we have now this plan B, uh, or this plan A that we're working on, and we, now in, uh, we will now try to raise capital on a plan B, which is like a, just a bigger mission. Yeah? And then we said, actually what we have learned there in the Netherlands, we can as well transfer to, uh, to Europe. So let's launch like basically in 50 markets in Europe. <laughs> um, and, um, and we can actually insource as well the logistics in terms of uh, as well building up a better kind of uh, experience for the consumers. Um, so and, that's, uh, and then even pr build up private labels. Um, so and with this plan, we then went to, um, to Chinovic and they invested and believed into us and uh, invested there. And then we went, I think, from, the, from this year of the 150 million, then the next year to 500 million revenues. Yeah? And from 500 people to 200,000 people in one year. It was uh, another tough year. Yeah, amazing. Obviously, we have to cut the story short. And uh, many new investors came on board. You did the same again with your ne next, next iteration. So reflecting on this journey, I think one key question uh, that always occupies us and entrepreneurs is, how much of a master plan and a big vision do you need from day one? And how much do you get go step by step? So I think uh, now from your entrepreneur, uh, maybe uh, from us investors view, how much of this huge potential and master plan should you have in the back of your mind? And how much you should just go after the first step once you achieve this to the next step to not yep. be too afraid of uh, what you're doing? Yeah, I would, I would say I, I think before you actually start, I think you actually need kind of the idea that this can be something big, yeah? because otherwise I think you won't, you won't find investors, you won't find people that actually wants to, want to join you as a company. Yeah? So you know, no, nobody really loves to work uh, for, uh, for a company that actually doesn't ha really have any impact. Yeah? Yeah. Um, but I think like what, the, what for us was always the, 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 yeah, the secret sauce, that we were always very passionate about the execution and we were always passionate about the next 12 months. Yeah? So having like the big idea in mind, but really your daily passion needs to be like for the next 12 months, uh, and if you're if you as a as a you know as a as a founder as like you know the, the, the where everybody looks uh, looks to if you're really passionate about execution then as well the other people follow we, because there's like this yeah, this right. idea of the of the great idea yeah. behind it. So I think great. this balance is yeah. kind of very important. Yeah, I think you you touched uh, on this point um, and. Uh, Two major ingredients of the success, obviously, are also technology and the people you hire. So, so you just uh, mentioned how you got to the people. Uh, many people said, actually, it's impossible to build such a retailer without deep domain expertise. Now, if you look at the management of Zalando, you're all pretty young guys, pretty inexperienced uh, in the sector, but hugely successful. So what's, what's your secret sauce about talent, uh, getting the right people? And what advice can you share with others? Yeah, so um, when, we, when we started, I think, the, I think it was mostly about, okay, how, when, you, when you get from like 6 million to 1 or 50 million, you need like an instant kind of, you know, uh, uh, an, an instant trust to everybody that you hire. So we kind of went more for people that were actually knew uh, and they were put into management uh, positions that we still have today. Then when was this massive scaling phase, 150 to 500 million, it was more about, um, you know, people that can actually cope with complexities. It was more like the phase where we hired a lot of uh, ex-consultants. Uh, ex and I think today, being such a big company and running such a big technology team, we as well hire like very experienced managers in technology, like from from yeah. Silicon Valley and um, and from from other companies. I think that's a fantastic uh, closure uh, of this. Uh, unfortunately, we have to uh, cut it here, but it has been a fantastic uh, journey. Let me express a personal thank you and also from our firm. Um, I think Salando is a fantastic role model in many aspects, and uh, we're very glad to have you here. Thanks, thank Robert. You. Yeah, take care. Yeah, thank you. A little souvenir for you, for your first Noah. Thank you. Don't forget. Thank, you Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Ryder. Thank you.